Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I go by Ceremony these days. And I wanted to make a video for you that I thought might be helpful. Um, and it comes from basically my inspiration for starting Prima Materia. So I've shared it in my, in my description of the shop, but just to hear it from me personally, where I just started looking at my medicine cabinet and um, not only the medicine cabinet in my bathroom that contains all of my tooth care products, my skincare products, um, shampoo, conditioner, lotions, all of that kind of stuff, but also my um, medicine cabinet where I take care of myself if, if something's wrong, if I get injured or if I have a rash or you name it. So I started looking at all of this and just thought, you know what, I can do a better job. And um, in college, I studied biology and I actually ended up going the route of um, marine biology in the end. But I studied biodiversity, conservation biology, and ecology. So I spent a lot of time out in nature learning the plants and um, really learning it from the perspective of how the plants interact with the ecosystem. Um, you know, knowing what plants grow where and why, that kind of thing. So I always kind of had that connection and I started, you know, getting into medicine work, um, gosh, in 2010, so about 10 years ago now. And um, from that, I started really learning a whole different aspect of the plants and why I love them, that each plant has an essence and a teaching and a certain spirit to it. Um, and so, about four or five years ago, I started wanting to kind of marry the knowledge of being curious about what constituents in the plant can do things and how they can aid our physical body and our mental body, our emotional body, spiritual body. Um, and then, yeah, also <clears throat> really having the knowledge of what it means to connect to certain plants, spirit. And then also having that knowledge of um, sustainability and um, protecting an ecosystem, not taking too much, wild harvesting and wild crafting and all of that. And then my lifelong passion for creating with my hands. That's always been something that I've loved to do. So my Prima Materia Apothecary was kind of born out of that. So I thought today I would there's a lot of videos that I want to make, um, and if there's anything in particular that you would like to know, then please let me know. I've got tons of ideas, but I would love to um, really serve you all um, in giving you the information that you want. Um, so I'm going to be sharing kind of what I do um, in my own daily life to take care of myself. And, you know, it's, it's funny when... Uh, and isn't this true with, with so many things, when I boil it down to what I use, the ingredients that I use, I might use a lot of different herbs, but the foundation of what I use for everything from my hair to my skin, um, inside is, is uh, typically salt, herbs, oil, and vinegar, and that's it. So I wanted to kind of take you through, um, you know, how do I take care of my face? How do I take care of my hair? And how do I take care of my skin? Um, I think it would be another video to go into the different oils, but I'll just very lightly talk about the different plant constituents when they're infused whole form, in whole form. So not an essential oil. An essential oil is a completely different process where it just takes out the volatile oils of the plant. So it's super concentrated, but it's not the whole of the plant. So it's not really a holistic approach. This is really infusing the wholeness of the plant into the oil and then using that. And I, I took a course a few years ago with one of my herbal teachers, Cammie McBride, and she taught me how to make really, really strong and really shelf stable oils. Um, and that just took my whole practice, my whole, um, herbal medicine making practice to a whole other level. Um, all right, so I guess I'll start with the face. So I pretty much just use oil for my face. Um, and, and I also use, I'll show you my, 
this is it's I call it my bug and moon spray on the label but it's actually a toner as well um, so I'll go over that so I use kind of a mixture of things um, and I've sort of evolved what I do with my skincare over the years at first I was using where's my other little baby cup there it is first I was using um, facial rollers and then I was using gua sha um, and now I've switched over to using cupping and what this does is it creates a lymphatic drainage for your um, for the lymph in your face I one of the issues that I really have is puffiness in the eyes um, so this really helps me to get the puffiness out of my eyes and it also just helps to move all of the toxins and the extra fluid buildup down so I'll probably have to make a whole other video about just the face care because if I went into the details about how I do that in this video then it would be and all of the other things that I do then it would be a really long video um, but I don't make these uh, these are the lure essentials brand um, they have two sets they have one set that comes with a few cups that you can also use for body cupping which I also do um, I I'm not gonna go grab my cups but I'll, I'll show you I, I, I do do that maybe I will go grab my cups because they're right over there for that <laughs> um, so basically I will use some of my herbal facial oil um, it has four amazing plants for skin health and wound care and just glowing skin and toning the skin. And that is elderflower, yarrow, calendula, and evening primrose. And the oils I used in here are castor, just a little bit of castor oil. This is, um, there's different ratios of castor oil that you can use for if you have really dry skin or really oily skin or combination skin. This is kind of like a combination skin it, it so it wouldn't necessarily be the best for super oily skin and it wouldn't be the best for um, really dry skin but you can also do things with the oil um, in your routine that can stave that off so castor oil olive oil and avocado oil so I coat really generously my face and my neck with my herbal facial oil um, <laughs> that lights really bright that's my herbal facial oil um, and then I'll do the cupping and I'll just explain really quick how I do the cupping so you you want to start back under the ear because you have really important lymphatic drainage points right there and you want to pull the cups so you'll pinch them and pull them down and then release them and you want to massage them towards your collarbones so I do my whole neck I do about 10 rounds of that I mean, sorry occasionally you'll see me looking not at the camera and that's because I'm watching myself doing the cupping making sure I'm getting the right spots and I'm also not used to filming um, so then the next thing you can do is under your jaw you'll do the same thing I'm not gonna do it because I don't actually have oil on my skin I've already done my facial care routine for the day um, but you'll basically go out to the edges again to those lymphatic drainage points and then you can do the chin you'll start at the chin and this is for men and women this is really good it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman this is really great for your for your skin and you'll just make your way up the face I like to use the big cups for under the eyes first and then I'll pull out to the temples and then once you've kind of worked the bottom of the face then you there's other lymphatic drainage points right here on your temple and so I'll pull that down first to that first lymphatic drainage point and then I'll pull it down again uh, the reason why you do the neck first is you want to empty out imagine like your whole uh, neck and head is like a bucket of fluid which it kind of is so you want to empty out the bottom so that the top when you drain it has somewhere to go if that makes sense um, so then you're gonna empty out the temples and then you can do um, you can do what's called flash cupping and that's just where you'll go so you can actually see when I do it it kind of creates this redness <laughs> it's just getting the blood flowing it's getting um, everything moving essentially that's the whole point um, so then you can start along the eyebrows you'll start like kind of in this area 
and then you'll move that out to the temples and I like to just go up all the way to the top of my forehead and then I'll go up and then I kind of want to make sure that I um, I start on the eyebrow like see how the eyebrow is like halfway in the cup you can kind of see it through the clear cup and then I'll go up and what that's doing is it's giving you an eyebrow lift so your eyes will look more open that's another issue that I always have is I always look really tired because I'm a single mom but also just because of the way that my facial structure is I have smaller eyes and kind of have hooded eyes and I'm also 38 years old so everything's starting to kind of <laughs> have gravity affecting it um, so what that does is it's a lymphatic massage, but it also lets the oil really seep into your pores. And then, um, I didn't bring this because I'm filming, I'm filming this over carpet, but then what I'll do is I'll take a rag, and the rags that work best are like those super cheap terry cloth rags, uh, like washcloths. <clears throat> and I'll get a nice big bowl, and then I'll put a couple drops of an essential oil, I love to work with copaiba and frankincense and myrrh. Those are some of my favorites. Lavender is really great. Also, rose that would be a really expensive oil to use on a daily basis, but you could do that. Um, and I just put a couple drops, and then I put really hot water. Um, I'm living with my parents right now, and they actually have one of those really hot boiling water dispensers. Um, so I use that, but you could also just use it from a tea kettle. That's what I did when I lived in, uh, in a trailer in Santa Barbara. Um, and so you want to have really, really hot water and then I hold one corner of the washcloth and I let the whole rag soak in the water and um, I, I want to keep that one corner dry because it's really hot and then I take it up and I kind of shake it out a little bit and then I'll grab another corner and then I'll shake it out a little bit. Um, more and you want it to be really really hot you want it to be to the point where when you wring the rag out that it kind of hurts your hands a little bit you don't want to burn yourself but it's like ah ah um, you want it that hot um, because you want it to steam then you're gonna put it over your face and I'll even kind of get down here and I'll kind of press the washcloth into my skin and, um, and I'll do that until the rag is no longer hot. And what that's doing is it's taking that oil that has been massaged deeply into the skin and it's steaming it into the pores and like dissolves like. So oil is nonpolar and so is dirt. So that nonpolar oil is gonna get into the pores really, really deeply penetrated by the steam and it's gonna scoop all of the dirt out of the pores. So I'll do that about four times. I'll, um, and when you shake your washcloth out, you wanna make sure that you're not wringing it back into that bowl because it's, uh, after a few times, gonna be dirty and it's also gonna cool that hot water down and you don't want that. Um, so just, I do it like, as, as about four times. And then that fourth time, I'll take the washcloth and I'll um, massage off the oil. So I find with combination skin that I usually don't need to do anything afterwards. I, you can, I usually don't need to put any oil on. Um, I do also have this sort of rash around my mouth that has developed. Um, that's why I actually have a really simple skincare routine. Um, and sometimes in the winter time, I can get that rash can get a little bit dried out. It's called perioral dermatitis. Um, if you have that, um, let me know, and I can um, I, I can kind of guide you. That would be a whole other video as well. Um, so then, if you have dry skin and you're using this oil, put oil. I I usually just put oil on afterwards, and so that's what I do when I get like the dryness around the mouth, when the perioral dermatitis is sort of like um, dry and flaky. Um, which doesn't happen except for like in the winter time when it's really really dry um, and If you have really oily skin, then just don't put anything on afterwards Your skin is gonna be fine after you do that and that's called the oil cleansing method But it's also combining it with cupping um, The cupping also has these little cups and this is like for the lips you can do like a lip plumping deal you can also pull them out if you have like really strong smile lines, you can also, it feels really good to do the sinuses. 
like that. It makes a funny sound too. And then it's also for the under eye. Um, I've sort of stopped using the smaller cups on my under eye because I have really sensitive under eyes and um, I find that sometimes it irritates. So I might use them for a little while and then once I start to see a little irritation, then I'll stop. And you can also flash cup first and then you can flash cup the upper eyelid and then you can pull out and then the last thing you can do with the little guys is go below the eyebrow and then cup up. Um, so I love this set. Um, I've been using this for a couple months now and it's just lovely. Um, and then <clears throat> sometimes before I put oil on, you can um, use, I, I use witch hazel and I've infused yarrow leaf in this. So this is in my shop as well, but you can also just use witch hazel. You can also just use, you don't have to buy my herbal facial oil. You can use coconut oil or jojoba oil or sea buckthorn oil or argan oil or um, whatever you want, basically. Um, and then the bug and wound spray I have, it has yarrow, so it's infused with yarrow, which is really, really great for the skin and for wounds and rashes and all kinds of things. Um, it's good for stopping bleeding as well. Um, and it's infused in witch hazel, and I just use that as a toner. Oh, that smells so good. <sighs> it's refreshing. Um, and the, the toner is also a bug spray. Bugs hate yarrow. I took this to Costa Rica with me and applied it every few hours. You have to do that when it's more natural stuff. You have to use more of the product or whatever it is or the herbs. Um, and I didn't get one bug bite and the mosquitoes were everywhere like all the time. It was kind of wild. And then it's also wound spray too because the witch hazel and the yarrow is really good for cleaning wounds. All right. So um, let's move on to teeth. I actually, um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna plug somebody else for a minute because I love this this kit. And I'll grab my cups as well. All right. So this dental kit is like $65. It's made by a woman named Rupam Henry. And her website is, is it on here? I think it's, uh, yeah, rupamherbals.com. So R-U-P-A-M-H-E-R-B-A-L-S.com. -E um, and this is her dental kit. And it comes with, it actually comes with two of these amazing bamboo toothbrushes. So no more plastic. Um, all of her products, just like mine, are made with glass bottles. And it comes with this one drop only dental soap and tooth elixir. And it's really incredible because um, I'll read you some of the ingredients for her um, kit. Himalayan salt solution, essential oils of myrrh, frankincense, and etc. Not really sure what that means. Gem elixirs, flower and planetary essences, and a soap base of magnesium, potassium, calcium, oxygenated and ionized water, coconut-based emulsifier, ash of dedicil. So um, it's mineralizing the teeth. It's also just not stripping your enamel. It's just all natural tooth care. She, she's an incredible herbalist and was a dental assistant for like 30 years. So I love that. And then also daily, she has the daily dental rinse. You just take like 11 drops of this and like a swig of water and then you just swish it around for a couple minutes and then um you all she also gives you a little container of um which is plastic i'll have to talk to her about that um activated charcoal and a lot of you probably have activated charcoal already um, i like to put it in my smoothies as well or I'll like make lattes out of it it's really tasty um but you just take the toothbrush when it's wet. It's usually wet after you've brushed your teeth anyways. Um, when I first got her set, she wants you to do it for like 10 days. Um, 
and and then after that you can just do it like once a week or twice a week but you just take the wet toothbrush and you dab it in there get some of the activated charcoal in it and you just press it onto your teeth looks really scary <laughs> you have black teeth and then you just swish you'll start to already naturally get a little bit of your own natural um, saliva and you just kind of make yourself a little rinse with it um, and you do that for like three or four minutes and um, it's amazing and then I also love to oil pull so um, I just made a new batch of oil pulling elixir this is way lighter <laughs> than my other batch that I made um, but basically with this you'll just take uh, my new bottles are clear because I love the colors of my oils um, and I don't have a dropper um, but you just take a swig or if you know or a dropper full a few droppers full and you just take a little bit in your mouth and again you just swish it and this is you can do this every day and it just helps to pull all of the extra plaque off your teeth conditions your gums um, and it's also really whitening coconut oil is really whitening um, I've seen a lot of whitening strips out there with just essentially coconut oil and essential oils and, um, and coconut oils amazing for that um, <clears throat> all right so hair let's talk about hair so I actually don't have a shampoo that I make I love lush brand don't love that it comes in a plastic container but I love their shampoo I like the big shampoo and it's the ingredients are super simple it's sea salt seaweed fresh citrus and that's it <laughs> I have tried to make this two times and it sucks my recipe sucks for it so I actually did just learn of a new um, recipe for shampoo today from one of my favorite um, youtubers holistic habits who has super long hair and she's always giving hair tips so I'm gonna actually try to make that recipe and try it out and see how I like it because um, I do want to have a shampoo I don't want to keep buying Lush's plastic shampoo I will say I only wash my hair probably twice a week and I work out every morning too and get really sweaty. I just usually just wash my hair out with hot water and that's fine. Um, and then occasionally I do have a conditioner too. I've, I switch around on my conditioners. I've been just using the Veganese Lush conditioner as well. Um, but I only do that when I wash my hair or and, and um, I also use hair oil so I put a hair oil I make a hair oil it has um, nettle and <clears throat> the oils are coconut oil grapeseed oil and neem oil and then in the the herbs are nettle because nettle is really deeply fortifying nutrient wise for the hair I put rosemary in there because that's really stimulating for the scalp and it's also conditioning for the scalp and the hair and then I also put um, horsetail in there because horsetail is really strengthening for the hair it has a lot of silica in it so it strengthens the hair um, and so basically how I wash my hair is I decide when I'm gonna wash my hair and that day I will do a scalp oil treatment um, and sometimes I massage it out to the ends but I usually just put it like really densely in my scalp and then I just take a head scarf I actually have one scarf that I have dedicated for this because whatever scarf you can you're using is gonna get oil stains on it so I have oil stains on a lot of my clothes <laughs> because I'm always making oil or using oil. Um, so I put the oil in my hair, I massage it in with my head upside down so that I'm getting that, um, you know, that stimulation to the scalp as well from being upside down. I wrap my head with a scarf and you can do that at night. It's good to leave it on for anywhere from a couple hours to 12 hours. So just do what's practical and good for you. Um, I like so you can do it overnight I like to do it during the day because as you can tell from I think it was my last email I sent out to you guys kind of my number one thing that I suffer with is nervous system stuff I've um, you know just it's 
at least the past few years has been really prominent. So I'm always looking for ways to de-stress and relax and oils are just there. That's where it's at. So, um, I like to do it during the day and I like to do it for like 12 hours. I'll do it in the morning. I'll wrap my head up. It's a, it's a scarf day at that point. Um, and I, I will put saran wrap around my head too. I will say though that I just learned about these thermal caps and I'm going to get one of those to try because I think it'll be a lot better than saran wrapping my head and having the oil drip down and maybe I can do it in less time as well and, and also have the heat um, really penetrate the scalp. Although doing saran wrap around your head does trap the heat so that's why I do that. It also makes it a little bit less messier for dripping down the face and or getting on the scarf as well. So when I wash that oil out is when I wash my hair. So first I'll do conditioner, two egg yolks, and a dab of honey. I'll mix that up and I'll put that coat it in my hair, wash it out, then I shampoo and then I condition again. And then after I've turned the shower off, I use my vinegar hair rinse. This is apple cider vinegar with the mother still in it, of course. It's um, the Bragg's brand. And then I infuse it with horsetail, rosemary, and nettle. The same herbs that I put in my hair oil because of the same reasons that I mentioned. Um, and I'll just drizzle this all over my head and massage it into my scalp. And that's really great for, I don't have dandruff, but if I did or you do, it's really great for dandruff, but it's also really great for alkalizing the scalp and for conditioning the scalp. And then it also just leaves your hair feeling super soft and shiny. Um, so that's the hair care routine. And then we'll talk about the body. So. I stopped using soap a long time ago. It's just really not that great for your skin. And I now use my, um, when I first made them, I labeled it as an herbal bath salt. But now if you look on my shop, they're called herbal bath salt, foot soak, shower scrub, because it's really all three of those things. So this is what I use for soap now. Um, I usually have different blends. The one I'm, I've got with me right now has bay leaf, chamomile, white sage, evening primrose, lavender, and then of course Epsom salt. And then I use my super strong potent oils. I don't just fill it with olive oil. I used to do that, but then I thought, you know what, why not just really go all out? And so um, this one has actually lavender oil in it. Um, and I have made four different formulations. I have one for healing, so that would be if you have skin problems, or that's a really great one too if you need to soak your, your body part because you have an injury. I actually got a huge cut on my toe several months ago. I dropped a plate and it like cut my toe and I was really nervous because I was pretty much gonna be like camping for the next two weeks. And I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? I've got this big wound and I'm gonna be kind of in the dirt. Um, I did one soak with that healing soak salt and um, with my foot, just put it in a dish, put some, put like a half a cup of the salt in. All of those ratios are on the container for whatever you're doing. And my foot was like totally healed and cleaned. My mom had, um, she gets this thing where her the top of her toenail rubs on her shoe when she walks and occasionally she loses her toe because of it. Her, not her toe, her toenail. <laughs> Thank God she doesn't lose her toe. Um, and that happened like a few months ago as well and I said, hey, why don't you try this? And she tried it twice and um, it actually, um, it didn't actually end up help save her toenail. Her toenail actually did just fall off a couple weeks ago but it helped it so that the toenail stayed on the toe and was healed primarily until it grew out enough to where it could fall off safely. And she had quite a bit of toenail grown underneath. So um, I use this as my soap as well. So I, uh, before I get in the shower, typically I'll do, um, oh, I should have grabbed that too before I made the video, but I basically use one of those body brushes you can find them online, they're like a circle. Um, you can find them with a wand too. I have the one with the circle and the hand um, strap. And you'll dry brush your body. So 
you just basically start at like the feet and you move everything up towards the heart. Um, and you can look up videos on how to do that online, but you just dry brush your body. Um, and then once you get into the shower, I use the herbal bath salt and I do, again, I do kind of like a lymphatic and what that does is it moves the lymph and it sloughs off the dry skin and it's stimulating. It's a lot of good things. And then I'll use, I'll just take like a scoop of the herbal salt and I'll do the kind of the same thing. I'll start like at my feet and I'll just make sure I get my whole body. Um, I will say I don't use this every time. Um, it, that would be really expensive and wasteful. And um, a lot of times I'll just use hot water to rinse off and that's plenty. Um, but I treat myself probably about three or four times a week um, with the herbal salt as a, sh as a soap. Um, <clears throat> and then the other times I just used hot water because I do shower every day, especially because I work out in the mornings. Um, and then for moisturizer for the body, I, I, lotion is very drying to the skin. It's water based. So it's going to pull water out of your skin eventually. So I use oils as well. Um, it would be a whole other video for me to talk about all the different oils that I make and what they're used for. Um, I, this is my St. John's wort oil. Um, I use this one a lot because it's really deeply nourishing and hydrating. It's good for bruising. It's good for burns. Oh my God, for burns. It's incredible. Um, and for nerve pain, it's really great. Um, and I think I already said deep wounds, but I'll throw that out there again. Um, but you could just use, you again, like you can just, for the herb salt, if you want to make it yourself, you don't have to buy the product. I'm just showing you how you can take care of yourself with salt, oil, vinegar, and herbs. Um, you can, you know, put some of your own herbs, make some of your own mixtures, look the herbs up, make sure they're safe for your skin, of course. Um, but you could, you don't have to use fancy oils. You could just use some olive oil and some Epsom salt, Epsom salt, get it plain is super cheap and then throw in some of your favorite herbs and make your own. Um, I'm not going to give you my method for making healing herbal body oils. I again paid a really pricey amount for learning how to do that and that's Cammie's um, information and so if you want to learn how to do that then let me know and I'd be happy to point you to her class. She's an amazing teacher. Um, but you can just use olive oil you can use coconut oil, whatever you use. So nourishing the body from head to toe with healing herbal body oils, that's something that you could do at night or you could do it, uh, I definitely recommend doing it at night, uh, particularly best after you get out of the bath. Um, I usually take my shower in the morning and I don't take a bath at night. Um, again, single mom, it's enough to get my son to bed and I just hope and pray that I have a little bit of time after that so I don't necessarily get in the bath after that. Um, but in doing it in the morning as well, it's really nice to do it after a bath because the pores are really open, but you don't have to, but you basically just cover your body and, and do that, you know, head to toe. You can also do that with lymphatic drainage using cupping. Um, I did pull out, this is the Lure, um, cupping, body cupping set. This is really great for any kind of inflammation, joint pain, injuries, bruising, um, and lymphatic drain drainage. Um, so again, that's Lure Essentials, and I use those um, a lot. And, or you could just rub your body in oil too, but you can use the whole cupping uh, massage, um, and you can look that up, and it's great for a lot of things. It's good for just moving circulation. So if you have like anything stagnant, like a bruise or an injury or muscle soreness or cellulite, even it's really great for cellulite. Um, then you can, you can use the cupping as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video on just how to take care of yourself with super simple ingredients that you can probably find in your kitchen already. And um, let me know how you liked this video and let me know if there's any particular um, oil that I can help you with if you have any questions about that. And um, I wish you well and I'll see you again in two weeks and happy new moon.